Hello students, I welcome you all in today's lecture. We are doing the elective English syllabus for intermediate second year students. In the last lecture, I had begun with an introduction to the poem on Shakespeare by John Milton. And today, I will be doing a line by line explanation of the poem with you. So as the title suggests, this poem is about the great English playwright William Shakespeare. I'm sure you all have heard the name of William Shakespeare. Okay, so this poem is about William Shakespeare and his greatness. So I will first read the poem line by line for you and then I will go with a line by line explanation. So I request you to please follow and the text is also there on the screens. On Shakespeare by John Milton. What needs my Shakespeare for his honored bones, the labor of an age in pilot stones, or that his hallowed relics should be hid under a starry pointing pyramid? Dear son of memory, great heir of fame, what needest thou such weak witness of thy name? Thou in our wonder and astonishment hast built thyself a long live monument. For whilst to the shame of slow endeavouring art thy easy numbers flow, and that each heart hath from the leaves of thy unvalued book those Delphic lines with deep impression took, then thou our fancy of itself bereaving, dost make us marble with too much conceiving, and so sepulchred in such pomp dost lie that kings for such a tomb would wish to die. So you must have heard the poem and also seen it. It is a short poem and it is full of grand praise for William Shakespeare. Uh, now let us go with a line by line explanation in order to understand the poem in a better manner. So let's see the first four lines. Uh, what the, does Milton say? He says, what needs my Shakespeare for his honored bones? The labor of an age in pilot stones, or that his hallowed relics should be hid under a starry pointing pyramid? The poet is referring to William Shakespeare as my Shakespeare. And in some parts of the poem, we get this feeling that he is addressing Shakespeare directly. Okay? Uh, so he is saying that. Uh, Shakespeare um, doesn't need any kind of monument, any kind of building, any kind of structure uh, to hide the relics, to bury the mortal remains of his body after his death. You should also remember that Shakespeare was also known as the Bard. So he is starting the poem with a question. John Milton is starting the poem with a question and this tone of question or interrogation is used in order to arouse the curiosity of the reader or the listener. It is more of a medium through which the poet John Milton can eulogize and lay down the qualities of William Shakespeare. So he has employed this uh, tone of questioning in order to uh, lay bare the uh, the greatness and the good goodness of Shakespeare and his writings. Okay, so this is a ploy that he has used in the poem. Because when there is a question, there is also an answer. And so he is uh, giving the question and he is also stating the answer himself. So you can see uh, that he is himself uh, wanting to uh, express the goodness of Shakespeare. So he has adopted this, um, this manner of question answer. Okay. So uh, he seems to be saying this after Shakespeare's death. Whatever this poem says, whatever Milton is saying, it appears that he's saying all this after Shakespeare's death. Because this poem was written as an epitaph. Maybe Shakespeare was alive, uh, but this poem was meant uh, in, in this manner that it was thought to be an epitaph. So when somebody reads it, he gets this feeling that Shakespeare is dead and this poem is a sort of reminder of the dead poet. Okay. So, uh, this poem is like a death note 
for the grave because and and when we have a death note for a grave we assume that the person has died we assume that the person is already dead so in the entire poem you will see this hovering tone of death okay uh, the poet that is milton he asks uh, that does shakespeare need a stone grave to bury his mortal mortal remains or should his dead body be buried beneath a doom to commemorate his death you can see that milton is using phrases like honored bones and hallowed relics these phrases convey to us that shakespeare was deserving of all the respect and reward and he was not a mere human being but instead he was hallowed or he was divinely blessed because the way he has written his works the uh, the feelings the emotions that he has uh, expressed and the manner in which he has expressed that is certainly something that only a person who is gifted with the quality gifted with the art can do okay so the phrase starry pointing pyramid refers to a tomb a tomb or a death monument which points towards the sky um it may be of different shapes it may be like a pyramid it may be like a doom or uh, any sort of monument okay so let's read further milton says dear son of memory great heir of fame what needest thou such weak witness of thy name thou in our wonder and astonishment hast built thyself a long live monument in these lines uh, milton is again praising shakespeare by calling him dear son of memory and great heir of fame uh, these lines are actually personifications these ideas as milton has personified both memory and fame memory is uh, yaddasht and fame is um, fame is shohrat okay so over here uh, he has personified these abstract ideas of memory and fame uh, as if they are human beings and so he has also given the human like qualities to both of these and he says that shakespeare was the son of memory okay and uh, so being the son of memory shakespeare is remembered even after 400 years of his death and uh, the phrase great heir of fame refers to the successor of fame that is shakespeare so like fame is a human being and his heir or his successor is shakespeare so shakespeare is remembered he is famous even after 4 years after 4 years after his death so you can see these uh, phrases are actually personifications and they are used to uh, specify the greatness of shakespeare that he is still remembered and he is still famous as he was at that time milton says that shakespeare doesn't need any sort of monument or doom or any decorated grave in order to be remembered okay and um, he says that thou in our wonder and astonishment hast built thyself a long live monument so you see this word thou t h o u it is actually Uh, it uh, actually means you okay and it is uh, a way of uh, writing you in old english okay so it actually means you so he uh, milton is referring here to shakespeare and i as i told you he seems to be talking to shakespeare uh, addressing shakespeare himself okay so he says that um, um, sorry that shakespeare doesn't need any monument why because uh, shakespeare has already built a monument uh, himself in order to be remembered okay and uh, Mm, this monument that shakespeare ha were, had built that was built during his lifetime which is so wonderful and so striking in its qualities that it will live for a long long time and now the question arises that uh, what was that monument that shakespeare had built which monument it was have we heard of any such monument uh, the answer is no because uh, we don't see any such monument that shakespeare built okay so uh, over here what does milton actually refer to so let me tell you that since this is a poem 
so a poem uses a lot of literary devices it uses imag uh, imagination it uses uh, um it uses allusions and it uses imagery it uses references okay so uh, over here this uh, word monument is actually a symbol it is used over here as a symbol and the uh, and you see that uh, monument is this word monument it is a symbol of grandness it is a symbol of remembrance any monument you see in the world that is a symbol of grandness or remembrance so uh, for example the taj mahal the taj mahal is a, is a monument and it is a symbol of grandness and remembrance remembrance of what of whom of the emperor that built it that is shah jahan so uh, this Uh, remembrance and this grand grandness is associated with this word monument but over here in this poem it is used as a symbol and shakespeare's monument is actually his writings that milton is referring to his poems and his dramas that uh, and all his literary achievements so they are just like monuments they are beautiful they are grand and they are memorable they remind us of shakespeare the only difference between these monuments and the real physical monuments is that uh, we can see the real monuments as buildings as structures but these monuments can be seen as literature they can be heard they can be read they can be imagined okay so this is the monument that milton is referring to in these lines uh, so with this i hope we'll pause over here today and we'll continue with the remaining half of the poem in the next lecture i hope you are finding the poem interesting and very simple and easy at the same time so hopefully we'll complete the poem in the next lecture i request you to read it and go through this lecture and take down your notes and if you have any questions if you don't understand any part then please write them down in the comments and i'll be more than happy to answer you so hopefully we'll meet in the next lecture Until then take care of yourselves thank you and see you